Peace everyone. And thank you for coming back. In pursuit of finding the true words of Allah, I have been researching for 40 years, then I found out about scientific evidence based on mathematics, the exact science, in the Arabic Quran, sending by Allah through two American scientists. By the grace of Allah, now we have the scientifically proven scripture, supported by mathematics. And despite other distorted scriptures, we have now, the purified, untouched message of Allah. Therefore, we do not have to rely on faith anymore, because we live in an era, of science. Now, Allah's religion is the proven scientific fact. All references to so-called Islam or Muslims in the news media and other forums have nothing to do with the Arabic Quran. Quran is for all the people in the world who seek protection for themselves, regardless of their race and nationalities. The mathematics of the Arabic Quran has undergone scientific scrutiny so far for 38 years by many people all around the world, and no flaws could be found. If you study all those scriptures, you would find out, that Allah made a covenant with Ibrahim, around 4000 years ago, and then he has been sending his prophets, one after the other, in order to repeat the same covenant, generation, after generation. And he was commanding them to follow the nation of Ibrahim, Bani, Ezra, Eel. The descendants will be transported by Allah. Yet, right after the departure of those prophets, we forgot about Allah's one religion, and started to idolize and worship those prophets, instead of Allah. That is why we came up with 4200 false, fake, and man-made religions. How is that, for religion whistleblower? But, there is only one religion at the Almighty, Allah. Follow the nation of Ibrahim, submission. Now let us find out, what we did up there, that caused us to be exiled on this earth in order to be suffered so much with hard works under the heat of the sun and cold nights of the winters. The Arabic Quran, says, here is awesome news that you turn away from it. I did not know about the feud in the high society. Allah told Muhammad to tell us, it has been revealed to me, that I am clearly the one, who makes a covenant with you, or threatening you. When, your Lord told to the angels, I am going to create a, Basha, or a, human being, from clay. So, there was a feud in the high society, up there, and then Allah came up with a plan. Because he is the best designer. The word Bashar in Arabic language means mankind, and Bashar is the representative of all the human beings. Also it comes from the root word, Bashara, meaning, good news. Now, Bashar refers to the body of the human being, and its gender in Arabic language is, male. Which is the one of the best designs of Allah. Bashar or insan. In Arabic language. Then, insan, comes from the root word of, nasiyah. Meaning the one who forgot. That is why, we do not remember, how we came here. Thank Allah for telling us to read the Quran in Arabic language, and he repeated ten times in the Quran. You do not get these informations from any translations of the Quran, but only, and only from the Arabic Quran. After that feud in high society, Allah gathered all the angels, whom they were working in Allah's kingdom, and he made a covenant with them. He said to them, I am creating a mankind from clay, and I am placing him, as a replacement or as a deputy on earth. Angels said, Will you place therein? one who will spread evil, and shed blood, while we praise and glorify you, and sanctify you. Allah said, I know something that you do not know. Now as you notice, the angels are confessing that humans were bad creatures, even in that dimension. We were wicked, and arrogant, and they saw us shedding blood. And there was not any surveillance camera to record us. So angels did not like humans. Then Allah had a plan, which angels, did not know about it, but Allah informed us about his plan throughout the hikmat of the Arabic Quran. So Allah said, when I have proportioned him and blow into him from my ruh, or Holy Spirit, then you should all fall down to him, prostrating. Then, 
all the angels prostrated, except Eblis. Because, he became an arrogant angel. Now, here is the definition of prostration from the Goron, Zura 16. The honey bees. Have they not seen all the things created by Allah? Their shadows, surround them right and left, prostrating to Allah, and they are all humbled. And to Allah prostrates everything in the heavens and everything on earth, every creature, and so do the angels, without the least arrogance. Here is the definition, they reverence their Lord, high above them, and they do what they are commanded to do. Therefore, prostration, means, to reverence Allah and obey his commandments. So, angels accepted to give service to humans, but, Iblis, refused. He was an angel himself. His representative on earth is called, Shaitan. He did not fall prostrate in front of the humans. Therefore, he became a jinn. The root word for Iblis, is, Bala, Sa, meaning the one who is hopeless, in despair, frustrated, despondent, dejected, discouraged, and desperate. That means, he will do anything to mislead us. That is why Allah repeated many times in the Quran, that Shaitan is the most ardent enemy of humans. And Shaitan means, the one who exceeds the limits, impure, ignorance, to deviate from the right path, outlaw, arrogant. And Jinn, means, the one who is, covered, or hidden. That is why we are not able to see them. But, as the Goron says, they see us from a direction, which we are not able to see them. Just like when you are sitting in a theater, you can see everyone in front of you, but they cannot see you. Assuming they are not capable to turn back. So, Allah continued his plan by creating a place called Jannat, meaning, the garden, with trees, rivers and springs flowing beneath it. Now these are all allegorical, and they are there, for our better understanding, but we do not have the slightest idea that how awesome those trees and rivers look like. But, Prophet Muhammad knew, because he was taken up there, and he saw them all. Then Allah placed the human representative, in the heaven, and called him, Adam. Not Adam, but, Adam. And with his wife, as well. Allah calls her, Adam's wife. Therefore, their souls were placed in the heaven. Not their bodies, but their souls. And we are, Bani Adam, meaning children of Adam, or descendants of Adam. Allah told Adam, that, Iblis is the enemy of you, and your wife. Do not let him evict you from the garden, then you fall into hardship. Indeed you will neither be hungry in it, nor naked. And indeed, you will not be thirsty therein, nor you will suffer the heat. Eat both of you from everything you desire in this garden, but, do, not, touch this, one tree. Remember, there was no angels in that garden to help poor Dam and his wife. Therefore, they were left there, in order to be tested and make a decision by themselves. Then, Shaitan started his scheme, on Ordam, and his wife. Now, let me first tell you about the conversation between Allah and Shaitan, before I tell you what happened in Jannat. Later on, Allah asked Iblis, what prevented you from prostrating, before, what I have created with my hands? Are you arrogant? or are you of the exalted ones? He said, I am better than him, you created me from fire, and you created him from clay. Shaitan saw in that dimension, that being created from fire was better than, clay. Do you know why? The reason is, the word, fire, in Arabic language is, na, and the root word for na, is, nura, meaning, the light. In Zura 24, Gnu Ra, the light, Allah says, that he is the light of the skies and the land. Or Allah guides you, with the light of the Goron. And he gives his allegory, made of lights upon lights. Do you remember, when Allah talked to Musa? He talked to him, through a fire. That was a light. That is why, Shaitan thought, that he was made of the same light, as Allah was made of. But, he did not know about the fire, that can burn him. Therefore, he had his own reasoning. Yet, 
that was just a conjecture of his mind. Also the meaning of his name, is desperate and unarrogant. The Arabic Quran, is our treasure map. Word by word of this book is a clue, in order to direct us to the system of Allah, and his creation. That is why he repeated ten times that the Quran is in Arabic language, not any other languages. In another or yeah, pointing to Shaitan, Allah says, are they more difficult to create, or the other creations? We created them from wet mud. That means human was more difficult to create than jinns. Jinns were created from merged fire, or mixed fire. But, Iblis, did not know that, hell, is made of nar, as well. Meaning fire. Thank Allah for his hikmat. If you do not learn the Arabic language, you would always be in the dark. Ask Allah to help you. Allah obviously knew that Iblis is becoming arrogant. Allah knew that Iblis would refuse to fall prostrate in front of, Bashar. That is why later on when Iblis realized that he was deceived, then he told Allah, that you deceived me. Because he thought, that, Nah, is the same as, the Nubra, which Allah was made of. The root word for deceiving in Arabic language is, Guya, that means to deceive someone, or to trick someone, also it means, to put someone up, to do something. Allah is the one who guides you, or mislead you, if he wills. Allah is the one who sends you to hell, or, to the heaven. Because, he is aware of your innermost soul, that is why he created us. Actually Prophet Nu, used that phrase as well. He said to his people, even if I advised you, my advice cannot benefit you, if it is Allah's will, to deceive you. Then Shaitan made a covenant with Allah, and said my Lord, since you have deceived me, respite me, until the day, they are resurrected. I will deceive them all, except your true worshippers. This phrase was repeated couple of times in the Quran. And if he was lying, Allah would have told him, you are, lying, no. I would not let you to deceive my servants. So, Shaitan is not lying. Then, Allah told Iblis, get out of here, despised and defeated. You are indeed, Rajim, meaning, stoned, accursed. And indeed my curse is upon you, until the day of Deen, or the day of religion, or judgment. Those among you who follow you, I will fill hell with you all. So, he was kicked out, from where he was, from among other, angels. Allah gave him permission and told him, you may entice mankind with your voice, and mobilize all your forces, and all your men, against them, and share in their money and children, and promise them. Anything Shaitan, promises, is no more than an illusion. And we are witnessing those humans who have been inflicted with Shaitanic seditions. And he told Allah, do you see, this one, whom you have honored, above me? If you respite me until the day of resurrection, I will surely fully control his progeny, except a few. Now, why did he say that? If you want to learn, you must ask question. As I just read from the Quran, Shaitan told Allah, Do you see this one? As he was pointing to humans in the other dimension. That means Allah was there, and he was there as well, and they were looking at the humans, in that dimension. Shaitan was looking at us, and he could see us that we were all wicked and arrogant and misled. And Allah knew that majority of us have became arrogant. So at least knew for sure that he could mislead us, because we were right there in front of him, being arrogant and misled. That is why he said that. With so much confidence, and Allah approved him. So, he remembers the righteous people from up there, and he will not harm them directly, but indirectly. How? By whispering to other arrogant people, so they would commit a seduction against the righteous believers. That is, when your relatives and friends, plan a scheme on you, and seduce you. Which I am very familiar with. Allah said, then it is the truth, and the truth is what I say. Surely I will fill hell with you, and those who follow you among them all. Allah said, here is the path that leads straight to me. Now here is the Oyat of the Goron. Peace.